Round 10 of the competition turned on a mountain of goals and the scoreboard attendants were certainly kept on their toes. The South Coast Wolves and Apia Leichhardt were both looking to start their climbs up the table as they chased three points at John Crean Park. Sydney Olympic were under a new manager and looking to make an impression against Bonnie Rig, whilst Rockdale were looking to continue their excellent recent form against the Central Coast Mariners Academy. And it was the Blacktown Derby in our match of the round as the Spartans met Blacktown City FC at Blacktown Football Park. That's all exclusive to Football New South Wales TV. This is the IGA National Premier League New South Wales Men's One. The South Coast Wolves hosted Arthur Leichhardt at John Cram Park with both sides desperately needing a win to start their climb up the table. And it was the home side who got off to a stunning start when Ricky Zuko called in a superb free kick just eight minutes into the game. It got even better for the Wolves just three minutes later when Mitchell Del Turco headed home to make it 2-0. Arpia looked rattled after conceding two goals early on, but shortly found their feet when Jason Oswell scored a header of his own to bring Arpia back within a goal. Four minutes later and Arpia won themselves a penalty after a handball from Jacob Timpano. After having mixed fortunes from the spot last round, Nicola Tineski stepped up again but made no mistake to make it 2-2 inside 23 minutes. Shocked Wolves fans were soon smiling again, however, when John Martinoski unleashed a rocket from distance to give the South Coast Wolves the lead once more. The second half started just as electric as the first. We didn't have to wait long for Apia to hit back. Jason Oswald tapped home the equaliser in the 52nd minute for his second goal of the game. But again, just two minutes later, the South Coast Wolves had the lead once more, and Mitchell Del Toco cheekily led the keeper to make it 4 3. But having given the lead up on multiple times already, the Wolves again let Arpia back in the game in stunning fashion. As three minutes before full time, Franco Parisi volleyed home to make it 4-4 and claim a point for both sides. So eight goals in all and a crazy night in Wollongong. The Rockdale City Suns have been in great form in recent weeks and we're looking to continue that against cellar dwellers the Central Coast Mariners Academy. The home side made the perfect start to ensuring that, with Alex Juraseski opening the scoring in just the fourth minute. Jordan Nikolovsky has been a shining light for the Mariners this season, and he showed why in the 22nd minute, producing a double save to deny both Anthony Perry and Richard Cardoso. Two minutes later, and it was Nikolovsky's opposite number, Diego Barchena's chance to show his quality, coming up with a good save to deny Jed Pratter. Into the second half, and the Central Coast Mariners Academy had the perfect chance to draw level in the 56th minute, when they won themselves a penalty. Matthew Crow stepped up to take on the responsibility, but saw his effort cannon off the post. It was a much improved effort from the Mariners and they were always in the game. The Rockdale finally sealed the win in the 90th minute through a very familiar source, with Richard Cardoso firing home to add to his impressive tally this season. Brendan Gann put the icing on the cake in stoppage time with a neat finish, making it 3-0 and continuing the good form of Branko Kalina's men. Second place Sutherland Sharks travelled to Cromer Park looking to keep the pace with the undefeated Bonnie Rig, 
and they could have been ahead inside the opening minute after Paddy Nikas was sent clear. Manly had their goalkeeper to thank, however, as Dylan Mitchell put off a great save to deny Nikas. Nikas would eventually get the better of Mitchell though, just two minutes before half time, as the midfielder scored with a neat finish at the near post. Manly had their best chance of the game in the 60th minute, when Brendan Chalakian's free kick was expertly saved by Nathan Denham. Manly did manage an equaliser, however, eight minutes before full time, and Josh Lawson fired in a neat header to bring the game level. But Panny Nikas would again be the Sharks' hero, scoring the last cast winner in the 90th minute to send the Sharks back to the Shire with all three points in a thriller. After going down to Bonnyrigg last round, City United 58 found themselves up against another rival in Marconi, with the two local sides in action at Marconi Stadium. The home side would be the first to score, however, when Sean O'Connell was able to lash the ball home from close range in the 29th minute. Just five minutes later, Marconi would have a second goal, when Milorad Simonovic scored a superb long-range effort but found the bottom corner. 2-0 to Marconi. Marconi thought they had a third goal just before half-time, as O'Connell found the net once again, only for Chris Griffiths-Jones to consult with his assistant and rule it out for offside. Taj Purcell did give Marconi their third goal in the 78th minute, after O'Connell's deflected cross wrong-footed ready and went into the goal of Purcell, who showed great desperation in the follow-up. Sydney United 58 had a late chance to bring some cheer to the away fans after Barach was sent clear, but his chip over Chronopolis slipped over the crossbar. So 3-0 had ended and Marconi are on the march, while Sydney United 58 now with back-to-back -back defeats. Bonnie Rigg went into the game coming off an impressive win over close rivals Sydney United 58 and they remain the only undefeated team in the competition. Sydney Olympic on the other hand came into this one having changed coaches during the week and looked as though they had a point to prove with Luke Grimmer putting a chance over early. William Angel had another good opportunity in the 23rd minute but couldn't find the target sending his shot again over the crossbar. But their early pressure finally did pay off in the 28th minute when Grimmer finished well making up for his earlier miss and giving Olympic a 1-0 lead. Adrian Uccino had a chance to equalise just on half time but could only send his shot straight at the keeper. Sydney Olympic raced out of the blocks in the second half and quickly had a second goal when Zach Elrich made it 2-0. Sydney Olympic fans were in dreamland just two minutes later when they had a third goal after a Murray Gortier's free kick found its way past Matthew Nash. And it could have been 4-0 in the 79th minute, but James Dimitriou's shot knocked Cannon off the crossbar. Bonnie Rigg had a late chance at a consolation goal, but David Gulo's attempt was well saved by Paul Henderson. So Olympic pull off a stunning win, the first team to beat Bonnie Rigg this season, and start life under new manager Grant Lee in emphatic fashion. This week's match of the round sees the competition's closest sides go head-to-head -head with the Blacktown Derby between the Spartans and Blacktown City FC. The Spartans have crashed back to earth following a club record three straight wins, whilst Blacktown City FC have been quietly climbing the table. Let's go to the Blacktown Football Park. Crane goes short. Lewis with it now. He's going to send it long. Mayora has half a chance. He's going to shoot Mayora. Oh, not too far away. 
Lovely bit of skill there from Major. Out to Miyazawa. Crosses a good one. Dangerous ball into the area. Okay, Tatsis is there. Sends it off to Major. Oh, well done. From Bacchus. Finds his way into the box. Looking up. Doesn't quite have support. So he goes back. Brad Georgianis with a shot. Oh, great save. Sally Adare. Mayora lays it off. Here's go Tatsis. Bacchus. Switch from Fred Giannis. He's major. Been heavily involved tonight. Does well to get round the defender. He cuts it back. Oh, here's a chance. Miyazawa! 1 0 to Blacktown. You have to say, Sally Adare should have done better. What about the finish from Miyazawa? We look at the in goal replay. Fires it in, into almost an empty net. Still had a lot of work to do and took it with a plomb. Here's Lewis. Nice little flick on. Gaitatsis. Looks up. He's got Mayura clear. Don't want to give him an opportunity. Oh, good save, Sally Adare. An important touch. Deflects it wide. So corner now. Oh, here's Mayura. Oh, off the crossbar. Sally Adare got a touch. Gaitatsis does well. Miyazawa. Back to Gaitatsis. Well, here's Mayura with half a chance in the box. Just couldn't quite get the ball out from under him. That's a lovely ball from Kato. Here is Carl. He's away. Oh, gets clattered down. And it's going to be a yellow card, rightfully so. Patrick Gatt, the offender. So Kondek leaves it. Here is Austin. Oh, great goal from Austin. Well worked free kick. And it never looked like missing. As we look at the in goal camera, that's a fantastic free kick. Curling it over the wall. And Brody Crane couldn't do anything about that in goal. So Sally Adare goes long. The one in the air. Showing his trickery. Looking for some support. And he turns it over. Although they'll get it back now. Okay, Tatsis his head up. Couldn't find an opponent. Cross comes in. Oh, Kato's there! 2-1 to the Spartans. And Kato comes up with a top-class finish. Just got a step on his defender. It was enough. He's deadly from there. Well, you could say maybe Brody Crane should have done better, but the Spartans have the lead. Sally Adare goes long, the one in the air. Looking for some support in the box. Showing his trickery, he's going to shoot. Gets deflected, he'll have another chance. Into the box! 3-1! What a goal from Bixco! Found his way into the box. It was lax defending from Blacktown City. Just walked it to the edge of the six yard box. And a player of any note is going to make you pay from there, which he certainly did. So sent long. And straight to Blacktown City FC. Here's Lewis. Now Major. So it's a fragile Giannis. Doesn't have a lot on, but it'll go long. Finds Major again. He's been pivotal tonight. He cuts it back. Oh, here's a chance for Rooney. Makes them pay. And it's 3-2. And we have a game on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. As we look at the replay, Rooney, Johnny on the spot. And buries it. And suddenly we have life. Spartans now looking to put an owl in the coffin. Here's Sone. Should have pulled the trigger. Mill Gates cross. He's a dangerous one. Here's Big So. Cuts it back. Still around across the face. Living dangerously, Blacktown City. Lewis goes long. Intercepted by Freeburn. We're on Austin. Here's Mill Gate. Lovely ball. Well, here's a chance. Kondek. Oh, how did that stay out? That was a great chance to seal it. Crane goes long. Oh, not it on by Mayora. Milgate. Bouncing around. Here's a chance. Major. Oh, across the face. Whipped in. Dangerous Rooney. He's got his second. We're all tied up at Blacktown Football Park. Four minutes to go. It's a late goal. 
but it may just steal a point. As we look at the in goal replay, made a great run to the near post and just directed his header on goal. Can't do much about that. An absolute thriller, six goals in all. It's Blacktown Spartans three, Blacktown City FC three. It's a bit hard, but like especially being up 3-1 at half time, we thought we could definitely get the win, but just a couple of lapses in concentration just let us down at the end. But yeah, but it's a, still a draw, it's not a loss, so just pick our heads up and keep going next week. Yeah, after the first half, and still I didn't think we played that well first half, you know, it was patches, you know, it's an interchange of good play, but our, our moments and it showed at the end, that's why we got the draw, because we didn't play for long enough, you know. Some good build-ups, some good finishes, but at the end we let ourselves down in the meantime. Everything else that happens, you know, I thought very poor defensively tonight. It's just a mental thing, I think. We sort of we sort of take our foot off the gas at times, and um, when we're up, we seem to be on top of teams, and then we just drop off, which we shouldn't be doing. When, um, as you said, we've got a, we've got a good squad, and as Crudo said, the only team um, that can beat us is ourselves. You know what I mean? I suppose it was a similar game a few weeks ago against Sutherland. We, you know, we dominated probably the first 35 minutes and took our foot, foot off the pedal. Um, we got punished for it. Can't really put my finger as to why. Um, don't know if it's fatigue late in the, in, in the half or. Just lack of concentration, but it's certainly something we need to um, need to sort out during the week. It was an absolute goal fest at John Crean Park with eight goals in all, with the South Coast Wolves and RPS sharing the points with a 4-4 draw. And the Sutherland Sharks ensured they kept the pace with Bonnie Rig, with Panny Nickus's 90th minute winner, getting all three points for the Sutherland Sharks. Looking at the ladder now after 10 rounds, and it's all square on top, with Bonnie Rig staying on top of the table on goal difference. The Sutherland Sharks have closed the gap courtesy of Bonnerick's defeat to Sydney Olympic and the Sharks' last gasp win over Manly. The gap is opening though down the bottom of the table with the South Coast Wolves, Arpia Leichhardt and Central Coast Mariners Academy starting to lose touch. Looking at all the round 11 fixtures now, then it would be an intriguing clash at Plume Park as both sides look to get off the bottom of the table as the Central Coast Mariners Academy hosts the South Coast Wolves. In completing the round, Sydney United 58 are back at the Sydney United Sports Centre, taking on the Blacktown Spartans. Well, that's all we have time for for this week's show. Make sure you tune in next week for our match of the round between two of the competition's informed sides, the Sutherland Sharks and the Rockdale City Suns from Seymour Shore. See you then. Football New South Wales would like to thank its sponsors, IGA, Subway, Coca-Cola, Elastoplast, Foxtel, Hummel and Nike, the official ball sponsor of the IGA New South Wales National Premier League's Men's One.